Well, uh, my name is Darminto, together with uh, Mrs. Ratno Asi. Uh, we give a tutorial in this uh, workshop. Uh, we are from the Department of Physics, Institute of Technology, uh, 1 November in Surya. Uh, I think uh, probably all of you have already seen and uh, at least uh, hear about uh, Surabaya with uh, some the iconic uh, object in this uh, slide. And this is the Surabaya in 1945. Uh, why I show this uh, figure? Because our university, the ITS, doesn't stand for Institute Technology Surabaya, but technology is November uh, because this is the, the day of hero in my, our uh, country. And you see that uh, in 10 of November, 1945, there was an important battle in Surabaya uh, where a lot of uh, young people die in, in, in that battle. So we commemorate this uh, as uh, our university name, so that the ITS uh, is uh, Institute Technology Super November in Surabaya. Uh, it is quite important for us because uh, many people quite uh, have a misleading about the S not stand for Surabaya, but it's full of November. Okay, it's just, just um, introduction of uh, our university. Okay, uh, this is our campus uh, with their almost 200 hectare. And this is the area with uh, 22,000 students, more than 1,000 academic staff and around 1,000 also supporting uh, staff, administration, technician, uh, laborant and so on. Even faculties plus uh, one school with uh, 40 department and around 60 study program. Okay, in the, this is our, our institute. And today I also invite uh, Dr. Rano Atsi to uh, describe with the, his study, especially in the uh, synchrotron X-ray spectroscopy. And for me, I will uh, maybe present the general overview in the synchrotron and research facilities. Okay, maybe uh, we know all that uh, we need the uh, X-ray yeah, because from from the simple things before uh, 900 uh, that from the uh, process seeing in the invisible things like like this one, and now we can utilize this about the. Uh, location, structure of the atomic, uh, as well as uh, molecular uh, structure, also electronic structure and bonding, and then uh, magnetic structure, is, even though it is uh, not a direct uh, analysis because X-rays is uh, also only a photon without a spin, um, instead of neutron probably, uh, spin a half, okay. When we utilized the neutron facilities probably several years ago, and then uh, at the time, the facilities is under uh, in uh, service and uh, also construction because maybe some detectors should be replaced. And, and then uh, for that moment, uh, we don't know where to go to, to find out the neutron facilities. And then we move to uh, synchrotron in, in Thailand with as a new uh, facilities in uh, Southeast uh, Asia. Okay, uh, I'm sure that uh, Professor uh, Ichikuni has already described well and complete the description with the, uh, especially the synchrotron X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Uh, however, I just, uh, uh, at glance uh, description about their 
interaction between the X-ray and our photon with electron in a matter. So the photon in that case is uh, absorbed by elastic scatter and elastic scattering and so on. And electron will be emitted, excited or be excited. So if we have a look at the cross section of this uh, phenomena, that it seems that the, from the photoelectric and the elastic cross sections to minute here, the energy below 100 kilo electron volt. So this is uh, make possible to study uh, the material structure with the spheroscopy and uh, scattering. This is the particle detected. That is, if this is the elastic scattering, like X-ray diffraction and elastic scattering, X-ray emission spectroscopy, and so on. And when no emitted particle, a photon absorbed by this excess uh, experiment. This is the mm -mm, uh, more common apparatus, especially in our country, the XRD many um, uh, have uh, this uh, apparatus, XRD, but uh, probably like this photo electron diffraction, so exap and so on, it is very rare. And even uh, as long as I can remember that uh, for the metron facility in Patan, in, uh, there are four uh, experimental setup, uh, including the small angle neutron scattering, uh, HRVD, high resolution border reflection, triple axis experiment, and the last one is a neutron. neutron Sorry, I forget. Okay, this is the some uh, experiment people do with uh, uh, X ray. Like uh, this is the exact local scattering of electron to nearest neighbor. Probably uh, some of our research uh, handling with the local structure as uh, we put in our title for this tutorial. Okay, then when we can uh, study with the uh, photoelectron spectroscopy, yeah, we can uh, dealing with the valence electron, this uh, chemical bonding like uh, hybridization, uh, like uh, type of bonding and so on. And probably in our uh, presentation, we give some example of this matter. Also, core electrons. Yes, this is uh, non interacting. So, we can uh, escape from, from this uh, inner electron, the core electron, to the valence uh, electron uh, by uh, radiate to some photon and then a uh, lot of uh, and some phenomena here. And we can uh, have an electron spectrum uh, depending on where the electron, uh, the original from the uh, uh, atomic orbitals. Okay, so some methods uh, relating to the uh, X-ray, it is the wax, so white angle, uh, is the opposite of sex, the small angle, and this is the photoelectron spectroscopy, and uh, X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Okay. Uh, this is the information about this uh, study using XRD, like uh, uh, lattice parameter, molecular orientation. Uh, this is the uh, <clears throat> local orientation like this, uh, two dimensional structure and so on. Uh, some of this uh, uh, study uh, we will uh, give us an example of, of this uh, synchrotron X-ray. Also, the electronic structure, chemical bonding, molecular orbital, local grouping, like this. Uh, we can, uh, let's say, the study of the pi electron system, yeah, with uh, the covalent bonding and also uh, hybridization, like uh, in the 
carbon atoms, uh, silicon, uh, germanium, uh, and some uh, atoms in the uh, right hand side of the periodic tables, yeah, in the uh, group A. Okay. This is the small angle scattering experiment. Uh, probably somewhere here we utilize uh, the sense uh, pattern, but uh, I do not know that uh, after the two this year, uh, I, I don't know if uh, this uh, facility is already developed with uh, good data because in last year, uh, last two years uh, before pandemic, my students uh, did experiment a few weeks and, and the data is still uh, experiment with the small angle metering. Um, let's have a look. This is the slide from uh, with the beautiful picture that uh, what can we do with the, uh, <clears throat> some experiment uh, related to the structure of uh, material like this one. This is uh, the diffraction. The diffraction this is the crystallography. The diffraction can be uh, with the source of neutron, X-ray, or electron diffraction. Electron diffraction uh, usually we find it in as, as a unit of the TM transmission electron microscope. Yeah, usually uh, coupled with the electron diffraction uh, facilities. And small angle scattering, Sykes or Sands. This is the uh, object between one to one hundred nanometers, or or uh, like uh, several hundred meters. Yeah. And this is the electron microscopy, and this is the optical microscopy. So from the uh, angstrom size object, like like uh, uh, atomic distance, the crystal structure, and the, the nanostructure, micro to micrometer to micrometers structure uh, can be uh, studied by uh, this uh, neutron, uh, X-ray, or uh, electron with the various uh, wings like this. Now this is the synchrotron facilities. This is the Synchrotronite Institute in, in, in Thailand, uh, also known as uh, Siam Photon. Yeah, you can access this uh, website. And since 19, uh, sorry, 2016, we signed MOU with the uh, SRE. And afterwards, uh, a lot of uh, staff and students uh, experiment there. And after the pandemic, we only send the samples and receive uh, the data. Uh, like this. This young photon located in the uh, city, Nakon Prachasima. It is the city uh, more than 200 kilometers away from Bangkok. So if you fly from let's say, Jakarta or Surabaya or then Pasar to Bangkok, and you will uh, be landing at the airport, uh, to airport. Uh, depending on your uh, airline uh, you take uh, and it takes around four hours from Bangkok to Nakon Prajasima where the Siam Photon Laboratory is located. Okay, this is our uh, MOU between the ITS and, and SRI. Yeah, Singleton Light Research Institute uh, in, in Thailand. Okay, um, this is the synchrotron located here. If we look, uh, have a look at the aerial photo from the facilities. And inside this building, 
uh, there's uh, this facilities here, and this is the uh, beam line facilities here. There are eight uh, beam lines from maybe this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Uh, and it is supported by the electron gun as a source of electron. It is produces uh, a big, very big number of electron by uh, electron uh, to heat up the cathode of the electron gun until the electron is released. And then a uh, high positive voltage is applied to pull the electron uh, into the linear accelerator. And this Linux linear accelerator, uh, the electron is accelerated again by microwave uh, power to attain at least uh, 40 mega electron volt MeV. And the electron are then fed into this uh, booster, the booster synchrotron. And in the booster, uh, electron accelerated again with the circular uh, path like this. And the electron energy is exceeding uh, one giga electron volt. And then from, from this filter to speed to, to the storage rings. And the storage rings, uh, the electron then accelerated by uh, some magnet. Uh, from like uh, dipole, uh, quadrupole, uh, and so on. And then it's converted to the X-ray and then uh, feeding to, to the beam line facilities. This is the beam lines. For example, beam line number, number eight, uh, where we use it. This is the X-ray absorption and spectroscopy uh, excess. And the energy spectrum in the Siam photon, uh, this is between the infrared UV, low energy X-ray, and there is this uh, type, I think this range. So uh, it can be used to study the, let's say, bacteria, molecules, atoms, and so on. It is the example uh, of the some uh, beam line. Let's say this is the number 1.1, 1.2, yeah, until uh, this is uh, PL8, uh, yeah, the last, the X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Okay. This is studies using synchrotron in our uh, laboratory together, of course, with uh, a lot of students uh, since uh, we signed MUU, let's see, uh, around six, five to six years ago. Yeah, and now uh, we have uh, maybe four less, uh, how many numbers? Uh, probably more than 60 uh, published work. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the lithium ion battery cathode. It is probably uh, the interesting material for Professor Effie and NBRI. Yeah. Uh, here, the student tried to substitute uh, from the lithium ferrophosphate yeah, by substitute some of the uh, phosphor using silicon. Using silicon. Of course, you can uh, try to substitute with the germanium, but uh, we have not uh, conducted yet around this. Uh, uh, type of uh, dopant. Okay, uh, if we scan with the X from zero, one percent, three percent, six percent. Yeah. So according to Zener's experiment, uh, the oxidation state of uh, iron it is uh, according to the silicon content here uh, from from this one, zero, one, one percent, three percent, and six percent. It is not a, in, in a good order. 
uh, if we combine this one with the electrochemical performance, the battery, so for the X uh, equals to 3%, it is the best performance here, this curve. This for uh, a specific capacity, yeah, this one and this the fault is around 3.2. Okay, uh, I think it is still not uh, easy to analysis the uh, role of uh, silicon doping here. But continue. But it seems that silicon doping enhance the electrochemical performance for uh, X equals to 3%. Yeah, it is not the lower and the lowest and not the highest. And in this case, it's not one uh, or six, but three uh, percent. Here, the uh, example of uh, this, the same samples. Yeah, if, if we uh, put this speaker to analysis uh, the distance or bonding about uh, the atoms, Let's say this is the phosphor and some of phosphor substituted by uh, silicon here. And here there are oxygen and with the level 3.1, 3.2, 1.1, 1.1, and so on. Yeah. And according to this analysis, we arrive at the distance about uh, this one. Yeah. Silicon substituting a phosphor uh, for this O11 and O31 here. Uh, they have uh, the biggest radial distance. Yeah, 6.1.6, 1.6. Uh, whereas in fact that uh, all doping, all other dopings here, one only one point. 1.6 and so on. Now, it is uh, quite interesting because uh, if uh, we dope with the silicon for 3%, uh, it will uh, give the bigger, bigger space uh, in, the, in the crystal and it enables for the lithium to. Uh, move out or move in from the crystal during uh, charge and discharge uh, process of, of the battery. But uh, to simulate this effect, it is need for further study. Okay, the second one is the another particle for drug delivery. This is mankan uh, iron oxide. Yeah, and we dope it the mankan for uh, zero to one uh, molar ratio. This is using the Sachs experiment. This is the data. Uh, this is the intensity. It is the key factor or uh, crystal momenta of, of the neutron during uh, the experiment. And we arrive by uh, some models to fit this uh, spectra. Uh, we have this this one, the air one, radius one and radius two, yeah, uh, depending on the content of doping. In this case, is one can. So we have like uh, 3.8, uh, 1.5, and also R2 around nine, uh, five to nine. And it is the D. What does it mean? Okay, if we compare it with the high resolution TM image, especially for G5 here, uh, we have a look at this 2.2. It is close to this 2.5. Yeah, and this is 7.8, it's close to 8 uh, nanometers. So we can. Uh, take uh, this figure that uh, 2.2, it is the 
primary particle of this particle and then 7.8 or around 8 nanometers it is near a clustering a group of primary particle this one this our sample is a powder so this is the clustering or aggregation aggregation of of the particle okay this is from the sac study next we also using sax uh, for the hydrogel. This is hydrogel, uh, polyphenol alcohol plus water. And if we uh, add some monotic number particle, we can have monotic hydrogel. So this is uh, for the artificial muscle in, in, in the biomedical uh, application. And this is the same analysis with the sacs yeah, here. And now this is uh, from one curve to another. It is the same gel, but prepared from the number of fishing towing. So it, it means that uh, for, from the gel preparation, we should uh, heating up and cooling down many times. So this is the fishing and towing around minus uh, four degree celsius until five to six degrees celsius yeah and here we can uh, prepare from one to six cycles of uh, freezing towing here and according to this uh, sex extra uh, we can um, extract this uh, parameters so what does it mean? Again, because hydrogel have a semi-crystalline structure where this is a crystal part and this is the amorphous part. And now if we compare some parameter here, we see that uh, this is four nanometers. This is four nanometers. And this is uh, eight nanometers. This is eight nanometers. So it means that we can extract the information about uh, radius of crystal line part of this semi-crystalline structure. And this is the distance between one crystalline part to another. Okay, this is from the Sachs experiment. Well, if we compare between Wex and Sachs, this is for the uh, amorphous carbon or RGO like carbon prepared from biomass, and this is for multipurpose uh, material. Yeah. White angle X ray scattering, it is very similar with the XRD. So, this is uh, the intensity, this is uh, two theta uh, until this uh, maybe uh, 60 to 70 degree. Yeah, and there are two peaks here, two peaks here, and that we combine with electron diffraction uh, as a, um, from, from the TM observation. There are also two circle, yeah, two circle, not, not to, to spot uh, with the sub dot, but it's circle indicated that the samples, it is not in the single crystalline, but in the polycrystalline yeah, with, with the, this two peak. Okay, now from the sucks experiment uh, this curve is doesn't fit with the one single fitting it needs to to two fitting uh, resulting the q here this q minus two this is q minus three uh, if we have a look for the q number this is around one to 100 nanometers and this one is above 100 nanometers. So if we compare with the TM, uh, this one is around some nanometers like this here, uh, corresponding to the Q minus two. This is the 2D structure like this uh, with the thin plate uh, like uh, powder like this, uh, figurizing the 2D structure. If in this area, this is Q minus three, 
this is TD. Uh, we would say the Campbell structure like this. If things like uh, the structure, if you uh, cram the papers, yeah. this is the 2D and, and 3D, and this like this one. Okay, this is the meso structure and this is the nano structure. Yeah. This one yeah, corresponding to uh, these two areas, um, like in Pak Kiri figure, Fitiba figure uh, has been presented before. Okay, now move to ammonium carbon. Um, I think from the last, from the previous uh, presentation, uh, somebody uh, asked about the carbon. Yeah, uh, we can we cannot use uh, the the uh, uh, XCS excess uh, using the carbon because uh, from the SRI facilities, the lowest uh, energy is around one uh, kilo electron volt and carbon it is uh, below one kilo electron volt. So we use uh, the PS, photo emission spectroscopy. Uh, but for this purpose, uh, we have prepared our samples. It's not in powder, but in uh, in film. Yeah, so we have deposited uh, some uh, dissolved uh, powder with the special solvent on the glass or other substrates. Okay, the amorphous carbon like this. Let's have a look from the ternary uh, carbon diagram like this. This is with the hybridization of orbital sp3 and sp2. This is the graphitic uh, carbon. And if you introduce a hydrogen atom here, and we have uh, this kind of this area uh, of the carbon phase. Yeah, it's tetrahedral carbon, hydrogen is carbon. Uh, this is a polymer, and this is the like like this one without H, without hydrogen, and this is the amorphous carbon, graphitic amorphous carbon. Okay, uh, when you synthesize a carbon. And let's check with the PIMS or XPS. Yeah. So from the carbon 1S spectra, this is the uh, experiment. And by the software provided by the SRI, uh, we can deconvolate the day to the deconvolution. Yeah. And here there are three uh, peaks, yeah. One, uh, this is the uh, carbon double bond, carbon carbon single bond, and carbon and oxygen. If we calculate the area under the curve, we have uh, this sp2 bonding around 63%, sp3, and others. It means that this is uh, carbon oxygen uh, bonding. Yeah. Okay. So if you use a beam, it is in, in one beam line in, in, in SLA Thailand. Yeah, this is a PES or beam. This photo electron emission microscopy. Yeah, it is converted from this curve to, to the microscopy like this. Uh, when the carbon carbon double bond, it, the peak has uh, the lowest energy. So this the black, the, the darkest in, in, in this uh, microscopy. And in contrast, if uh, you have uh, carbon oxygen uh, single bond here in the higher energy, Bending energy, so it resulted the uh, brighter uh, spot here. So in this image, we can imagine that uh, the white one it is the CO bond or face with the CO bond, 
and the darker in the gray. Uh, this is the sp3, a carbon carbon uh, single bond, and in the matrix is a carbon carbon double bond or sp2 bonding. So this is the image image like microscopy image uh, C SEM or TEM. But uh, this is uh, described the uh, phase according to the bonding type of uh, carbon. Okay. Now, at the practical application from, from the SRI, uh, this is the fundamental science, yeah, like, like what uh, we already discussed uh, before, that uh, discovering atom and molecular properties. Uh, bond length, uh, length uh, bond between atom and molecular matters, the study of properties, and so on. And then from the medical science, biomedical application, like our uh, compound iron oxide, yeah, we use it for the drug delivery uh, system. So it is from the example of medical uh, application. And also uh, gel for the artificial muscle, yeah, which is uh, we have to guarantee that it is uh, uh, bio uh, compatible with uh, our organ for 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 the uh, bio tissue. And then industrial research, but I think uh, our industrial activity. Uh, doesn't touch uh, this kind of uh, experiment or studies. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's uh, wait and see. Remember that before the pandemic, uh, Batan already invited uh, some industrial uh, part to uh, study the, with the uh, neutron uh, facilities. Yeah. Okay. In Thailand, is also developed the, the use of synchrotron uh, with the fishery or sea product like this for the frozen stream uh, in order to check if there are a white spot in in, in this in the uh, in the stream uh, because of the this one the uh, calcification as a result of water water loss yeah because it is uh, frozen and water will be lost. And this is leads to the calcification of, of, of this uh, stream. And then for industry, uh, this is like a, like a wood uh, pattern uh, in, in metal, yeah, uh, by uh, can be uh, studied uh, synchrotron light that is covered with the wood grain caused from residual chemicals in, 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 the, in the process uh, during uh, publication. And this is probably interesting for us, yeah, with the bio product and bio uh, handling uh, to use uh, this one for the uh, enhance the added value, like, like cassava, we have also another uh, family or species of cassava like uh, borang and so on. I think uh, we had a lot of uh, this kind of uh, study using uh, the same facilities. Okay, uh, I think that's all I would like to uh, give in the tutorial. And afterward, uh, I invited uh, Mrs. Ratno Asi to probably uh, present some uh, study cases to uh, handling some material. Okay, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, please, Ms. Retno, Asi. Okay, uh, I would like to share my screen. Can you see my screen right now? 
Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Indri and Professor Derminto for the opportunity. So uh, I'm Ratno Asi from Institute Technology 10 November and the presentation I would like to uh, deliver today is about the case study, how we use uh, synchrotron X-ray spectroscopy to characterize um, materials. And uh, I think uh, some of the audience already has a lot of experience how to use these facilities at SLRI. So here I would like to uh, just like uh, discuss or share my experience and how to apply a beam time also to analyze the data. And of course, uh, for, uh, talk from Professor Itikuni uh, previously, I learned a lot from uh, his talk. So honestly speaking, I'm also a beginner to use synchrotron like source. And previously I used to work with Mion spectroscopy and it's uh, there is a big difference between light source and also MEON. If in MEON we work in direct space, but here we work in K space and it requires a lot of, uh, as Dr. Indri say, a lot of uh, patience to do the analysis of the data. So here is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I would like to review a synchrotron like source at SLRA Thailand, and then a brief introduction to SAS. Uh, actually, it's already explained very well by Professor Ichikuni. And then uh, I go to the case study, first case study, which is a local study on manganese and copper dopsing oxide nanoparticles. And then uh, come to the X-ray photo electron spectroscopy, only a brief introduction and uh, the last one is to discuss about XPS study of amorphous carbon. Okay, so here is the synchrotron light source at, at SLRI Thailand and Professor Dermento already explained this uh, very well. The number one is electron gun, yeah, produce electron and, and then number two, we have linear acceleration. So here the electron is grouping into a bunch of electron. And then in number three, we have booster synchrotron to accelerate or to increase the energy of the electron using wave or radio wave. And then next we have storage rings. Yeah, this is to increase more the energy of the electron. And here uh, there are eight beam line at SLRI. And in this study, we are using beam line 101, uh, 1.1 uh, SAS spectroscopy and also beam line 3.2A, uh, which is uh, XPS and uh, PES spectroscopy. And at SLRI, there are 10 beam lines. You may already know this one. And if you want to uh, know more detail about this, you can go to a web page of SLRI in here. And how to uh, get the beam line at uh, beam time at, at SLRI? This information also are posted in SLRI web, website. So what we need to do first is to register an account and then we fill enter the system and then uh, fill out the application form. It's just like the proposal to access, to request the PIM access. And then if our proposal is uh, has been evaluated and accepted for, for the PIM access, so then we will uh, guide by the SLRI to do the experiments. Okay, I will begin with the first one, which is X-ray absorption spectroscopy. And it's already explained by Professor Ijikuni. I just go this uh, very fast. So this X-ray absorption spectroscopy is element selective technique for determining the local geometric and 
electronic structure of matter. So then what I mean with the element selective technique is that we can choose the a targeting uh, element or targeting atom so that it doesn't require long range uh, order such as the crystal. So we can analyze, for example, one iron, an iron atom in protein. And also uh, SAS use X-ray to excite core electrons in molecule or material. So then it's required synchrotron radiation facilities. And these facilities will provide intense and tunable X-ray. And also here, the sample can be in the phases of gas, solution, or solid. If we compare with another absorption spectroscopy, for example, UV-Vis spectroscopy, so in UV-Vis, we, we using uh, wave, uh, electromagnetic wave in the range of UV and visible light. And then this light is targeted to the samples, and then we can look or detect the uh, intensity absorbed uh, that absorbed by the absorbance of the samples and the spectra is looks like this yeah we can see this here the wavelength versus the intensity absorption intensity and in case of UVV spectroscopy uh, we targeting the electron at valence band and this will explain about the electronic uh, absorption. In X-ray absorption, of course, we are uh, here require synchrotron radiation. So we need uh, linear acceleration to generate that. And monochromatic X-ray, yeah, high energy X-ray is used to analyze the materials. And in this case, we will get the spectra it's like this energy versus the absorption. And this spectra consists of two regions, sense and exa, as previously explained by Professor Ichikuni. And what uh, make it different from UV, UV uh, spectroscopy is that in X-ray absorption spectroscopy, we targeting core level so then this electron at the core level will excite to a conduction band or maybe at the a continuum level and here uh, sense uh, consists of two regions as i explained before uh, sas uh, senus and also exa so here this is examples of the uh, sas spectra in this part is uh, sense region, and in this part at high energy range is exaf. So uh, sense itself, it consists of pre H, H, and also usually the analysis of sense uh, absorption peak is around 50 electron volt from, from the H peak. And what we can uh, see from this spectra is that, for example, here, this pre-H peak is related with the excitation of photoelectron yeah, from the core electron to the uh, empty G orbitals. And the rising uh, peak here, or at the H uh, region here, is related with the excitation of core electron to the unoccupied orbitals. And then the exaf here is related with the uh, excitation of core electron to the continuum uh, region or continuum level. So here, the absorption peak uh, in uh, due to the absorption of X-ray at the edge of the band in, in SAS, and this edge uh, energy can be used to assess what the oxidation state of a metal in a material. And so the H energy is quite sensitive to oxidation state. For example, here is the uh, sense spe spectra of manganese with different oxidation state, two, three, two, and four. 
by increasing the oxidation state, we can see here that the H energy is shifted to the right, yeah, shifted to the uh, high energy level, uh, high energy here. So it means that it's required more energy to exit the excited uh, an electron or electron for the higher oxidation state. Uh, another example here is that SANES can be used to identify the oxidation state of unknown in, in a mixture. So here is examples for uh, plutonium with different oxidation state. And if we have unknown samples, uh, this part, yeah. And we know that this unknown sample is matching quite well with uh, plutonium-4. So by using this way, we can identify that this unknown uh, is uh, having the oxidation state of four, positive four. And, and as the summary here, uh, information what, what we can assess from the same spectra is that from the pre H, yeah, we can know about the local Q metry, also oxidation state and bonding characteristic. And this pre H feature is very sensitive to the uh, local environment. So, for example, if we have uh, manganese three and manganese four, uh, two of them has different uh, surrounding. Well, uh, manganese three is octahedral, when a manganese four is tetrahedral. So then the intensity of the pre H is uh, having quite different features, and the H. Uh, region can tell us about the oxidation state, as I give the example in the previous slide, that it speaks to the higher energy by increasing oxidation state. And also, about 50 electron from the edge, we still have the spectra of sense, but uh, this information, such as atomic position, interatomic distance, and geometric structure, will be uh, more powerful to be analyzed in EXAF region. So then I come to the EXAF here, EXAF region. So this region extends for up to uh, 1,000 electron form beyond the edge. And for monoatomic gas, this will not display the fine structure. So only elastically scattered electrons that contribute to the EXAF spectra. And this is quite sensitive to the local order. And also the resulting photoelectron have low kinetic energy. Yeah. So that's why the backscatter, uh, the, this electron will be backscattered by the surrounding atoms. And then we can see the oscillation in EXAF uh, spectra. So for example, is yttrium in water solution. So the X of oscillation here uh, occur due to the interference of outgoing and backscatter photoelectron wave. So that's why we can see here in X of spectra, uh, this kind of curve, oscillation curve. Yeah. In the case of constructive interference, we can see peak and vice versa here is destructive peak. Okay, and from the oscillation of the X of spectra, we can uh, get some information here. For example, we, if we do the analysis of this spectra, so from the frequency of this oscillation, we can know about the bond length and the, from the amplitude of the oscillation tell us about the coordination number and uh, also phase and also shape, it will tell us about the type of uh, scatterer atom. Here is the measurement mode of SAS spectroscopy at SLRI. So basically, there are two types of mode, transmission and also fluorescence. In, uh, in general, uh, the measurement mode is like this. So we have the source, X-ray source, and then monochromators, and then I, I say I zero or I not is the initial information. This is the initial intensity of the incident 
X-ray. And then when this X-ray passing through the samples, the information is represented by I1. And then once again, the X-ray will passing through the reference samples and then we can get the information as I2. So here the reference sample is used to normalize in analyzing the data. And in case of uh, um, transmission mode here, the absorption coefficient here is uh, corresponding to the length of I naught divided by I. Yeah, because if we have, for example, uh, here, uh, X-ray with intensity I naught and then this uh, passing through the sample with the thickness of X, so then the uh, intensity become I naught exponential minus mu X so that we from here we can uh, determine the absorption coefficient. But in photosense mode, uh, we are using another detector here and we will cut the information represent as IF. Yeah intensity of fluorescence and the coefficient absorption absorb, absorption coefficient is corresponding to IF divided by I naught. So in summary, by using SAS measurement, uh, we can divine, uh, we can get the information. Uh, first, we can get the spectra of uh, SAS spectra is like this, consists of SENES and also EXAF. And as for the sense, yeah, sense uh, here, we can analyze about the oxidation state, molecular structure, and also electronic structure. So as I said before, the pre-H here is very sensitive to the uh, surrounding atom. So that's why uh, here chromium-3 and chromium-6 uh, has a different feature in the pre-H. And as for the EXAF, from, from the EXAF oscillation, we can quality, quantitatively uh, determine the local structure, such as uh, the distance between uh, the atom to the uh, nearest neighbor. And then we can define also what kind of atom at the first nearest neighbor and also the coordination number. And then I come to the first case study, which is a study, a SAS study of manganese and copper dopsing oxide nanoparticles. Uh, actually, uh, Professor Darwinto already explained some example, just, just for compliments. So the measurement was done at SLRI beamline 1.1W. And here is the specification of the beam line. And uh, our purpose is to examine, examine the oxidation state and also local structure uh, surrounding the copper atom and also manganese atom. And uh, here we, do, we did the analysis of the spectra using Athena and Artemis. And I guess uh, Bruce Raffel also uh, give a lecture how to do the analysis in this these two software so you can find easily on internet. Okay, so why the zinc oxide is fascinating, uh, especially in this study, is because zinc oxide is a candidate for dielectric magnetic semiconductors. So in here, in GMS, not only spin of the electron, we can also explore the charge of the electron. And to uh, synthesize uh, or to prepare GMS, we can do substitution of small fraction of ma magnetic elements to the semiconductors. And these dilute magnetic semiconductors is uh, uh, provide our new application for generation devices like Spintronic. And zinc oxide itself has uh, some crystal structure. 
polymorphs such as hexagonal ursaid, zinc blend, and also rock salt. And zinc oxide that we prepare in this study is this one, which has the hexagonal ursaid structure. And this zinc oxide in particular is uh, fascinating. This is N-type semiconductor with wide direct band gap and large excitation binding energy. So by transition metal job zinc oxide, this was reported that the optical properties can be tuned by magnetic moment and will exhibit a giant negative magnetoresistance. And also the manganese and also copper ions are isovalent to zinc oxide. So we can control the charge carriers independently of that of spin. So by using this, uh, transition metal doping, we hope that we can uh, control not only spin, uh, electron spin, but also the charge. And the radius of its ion is uh, quite similar, uh, manganese and copper with the zinc. So as for the magnetic properties, pure zinc oxide is reported to have diamagnetic properties. And when we do the substitution of metal transitions such as manganese or uh, sorry, copper, this would be copper. So the magnetic properties of this uh, compound uh, in, uh, in case of tin films is uh, fair, uh, varies. Yeah. Some reported to have ferromagnetic, other paramagnetic and uh, another one reported to have diamagnetic properties. And this uh, variation in magnetic properties is uh, expected due to effective carrier density, which is the key in the magnetism of uh, manganese top zinc oxide and also copper top zinc oxide. And we inter what we want to study here is that what happened in manganese zinc oxide and a copper top zinc oxide nanoparticle because this uh, nanoparticle itself will provide uh, oxygen at the prison of, of oxygen vacancy. So here is the XRD analysis of MZO and copper zinc oxide. So a single phase are, uh, was uh, a fawn here with wood structure with nano size crystalline phase. And in case of copper top zinc oxide, we found that the secondary phase appears at higher copper concentration, more or equal to 28%. And by increasing the copper contents, the crystal size uh, decrease. And this can be understood because of difference in the uh, ionic radius between zinc oxide and copper, where copper has smaller ionic radius compared with zinc ion. I will begin first with manganese zinc oxide. And here is the manganese key edge sense spectra yeah, in normalized absorbance. And the right part here is the derivative. So we can see here, we, we are using for standard reference, manganese foil, mangan oxide, MN2 oxygen 3, and manganese dioxide. And if we look at this spectra, we can easily know that our samples, MZO with difference concentration 3, 5, and 7 here, is quite similar. The feature is quite similar with manganese dioxide. So from here, we analyze the pH and also H uh, energy. And we found that the pH energy is about 6,539 electron volt in all the samples. And also here, the H energy is larger than manganese, mangan oxide, and Mn2O3, but a smaller than manganese dioxide. So roughly speaking, that the oxidation state of manganese MZO sample 
So P in between of two plus and four plus. And to confirm this, we can do a linear interpolation of the H energy to the oxidation state. And we found that the oxidation state of the drop sample is like this, about 3.124 uh, MZO 3% and so on. And as Professor Ichikuni said that it's not recommended to only analyze this data by using linear interpolation. We can also use linear combination fitting of the uh, this same spectra. Yeah. So then we can estimate the ratio between uh, this mixture. Yeah. For example, a mixture oxidation state mixture. For example, Mn3 plus and Mn4 plus. And what we can say from this sense data is that the manganese ion in MCO sample has a mixed valence state of three plus and four plus, and the oxidation state tends to increase with increasing the manganese concentration. The next one is for key H exaf energy. So here is the examples of uh, KH exaf spectrum for MZO7. And we do the fitting, this one, but we only focusing on first nearest neighbor. Uh, and we found that here, uh, the first nearest neighbor atom is oxygen and the interatomic distance is about uh, 1.9. If we see at the R factor here, the uncertainty between all fitting parameter is uh, small. And from the DB Waller factor, you know that the crystalline irregularity due to manganese substitution is also relatively small. And also uh, here, uh, uh, the coordination number of the manganese is uh, deeper from its ideal coordination number of four. So uh, it can indicate the presence of the oxygen vacancy. Okay, so here. Okay, right now. So um, we have uh, maybe three three minutes left. Okay, three minutes. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. yeah. So here the enhancement in the uh, amount of the oxygen vacancy is indicated by this coordination number. And then if we look at the magnetic properties here, uh, by mangan chopping, manganese chopping, the magnetic properties of zinc oxide is uh, increasing here. And we can see this exhibit paramagnetic nature, which might be some coexistent with uh, super paramagnetic contribution. We still can see the slightly bent at uh, external field equal to zero kilo or state. So near zero here, uh, we can see the hysteresis. And I, we can see here that this, uh, from here, uh, MZO5 and 7, uh, so the increase in the magnetization. And this is actually consistent with the uh, SAS analysis that in these samples, the oxygen vacancies might be the highest compared with the MZO3. And the next one is uh, by uh, in copper drop zinc oxide. Yeah, we do the same analysis and found that the ox highest oxidation state is uh, form, uh, was found for CZO gene sample. It means that 30% of copper dropping on zinc oxide. And also the exaf spectra here, we find that the interatomic distance between copper and oxygen, oxygen is 1.9 angstrom. Uh, this is without phase correction. And also the coordination number also differ from the ideal coordination number of four. And again, the 
13% of copper content exhibit the lowest coordination number, which means that it has the highest number of oxygen vacancies. And interestingly, it consists of uh, the magnetic properties also. So uh, quite interesting magnetic properties for X equal to 13%. So here we can see that the saturated magnetization increased drastically for X equal to 13%. And also in this uh, curve, we can see the divergence in the zero field cooling and field cooling. And this could indicate the magnetic anisotropy in copper dopsing oxide. And at 13% of copper or equal to 4% of uh, copper uh, weight, weight percentage here, uh, the magnetic, uh, the electrical conductivity also do work quite well uh, here. The electrical conductivity is the highest among the samples. So that could be a strong indication and relation between magnetism and oxygen vacancies. So then to explain that, uh, we, we, we propose that this is uh, related with indirect double exchange model in uh, metal transition dopsing outside, which was found in CZO thing phylon. So in here, the double exchange effect is mediated by the large oxygen vacancy orbital. So the copper moments in the proximity of the oxygen vacancy align parallel to each other. So then we can see the ferromagnetic uh, behavior. And this is mediated by uh, oxygen vacancy orbital. So what we can get from this study is like this is that nanoparticle provide a unique platform to generate oxygen vacancy. And in this case, manganese and copper is the source of magnetic moment. So that this uh, amount of oxygen vacancy enhanced by dropping and this affect the magnetic properties of the samples. And from this study, we can confirm that the oxygen vacancy plays a role to mediate the hopping of top electron between different manganese and copper state. So a strong relation between manganese and copper magnetic woman with the oxygen vacancies. And the next one is about a case study about X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. So this is uh, widely used to uh, for surface analysis, and it's uh, simple in use and data interpretation compared with SAS. And what the difference is that uh, we are also targeting core level, but then we do look at the uh, kinetic energy of photoelectron. And the kinetic energy can be obtained by this equation. This is the energy of uh, incoming photon minus the energy, a binding energy of the electron and work function. So from the XPS, we can uh, see this kind of information, elemental, identi elemental identification, relative composition, and also valence band structure. And here is the examples of wide scan spectrum, XPS spectrum of gold. And how to do the identification is one, uh, first we check the peak position and relative peak intensities, and then to check the spin orbital splitting yeah, and area ratio. And for this study, the measurement was performed using uh, PES at beamline 3.2, UA at SLRI Thailand uh, with the photon energy range uh, between this one 40 to 1040 electron volt. And it's required ultra high vacuum sample environment, which is less than 2, 10 to minus 10 millibar. And to do the analysis here, uh, basically you can use programs like uh, Origin or Advantage or any other program, but actually the beamline scientists in this facility also provide us with Microsoft Excel uh, embedded with XPS macro. So can we, we can to analyze the XPS spectra by using simply by using Microsoft Excel. Yeah, this is the example. Here is the wide range. And then we can look at the specific peaks. And by 
uh, do the, the convolution of this peak, we can get the information such as elemental identification and also uh, relative composition or bonding. So here is the example for our result in amorphous carbon films. Professor Darminto already explained. So here the amorphous carbon was synthesized from Palmyra sap and we do the we prepare the thick film on ito substrate and do the doping with boron and nitrogen and by using xps we can clearly see that uh, successful insertion of the nitrogen and also boron on uh, carbon bonding as i saw in this figure sorry i go very fast here and this is the result in the table so we can, uh, aside, uh, aside from what type of the bonding, we can also estimate the relative ratio of its bonding from the area of the peak. So maybe that's all from me. Sorry to uh, a long presentation. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So from here, I want to say that the XPS is also quite powerful to study uh, carbon compounds, especially to identify the hybridization and bonding type. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry, Dr. Indri. Okay.